Hello and welcome back to In The Kitchen with Pen and Steve and if you saw our video last week where we purchased some meat from KDC Meats you'll know that we left one joint out for use on Sunday. Well today is Sunday so Steve is going to season the meat. Dr. Season. So Dr. Oh, I do apologise sir. Dr. Season is going to season the meat and we're going to dehydrate it in our Ninja Flexi Draw AF500 UK. The seasoning he's going to use is a seasoning mix that we made up. It is sea salt, black pepper, garlic powder, that's all. So um, I'll transfer you over to him. Right, there's our meat. Don't forget girls, always smell your meat. <laughs> I haven't been me, so I just thought I'd throw that one in. Um, right. Shall I bring it down so they can see? Yeah, go on, do what you like. Oh, um, well, that's not often. I'll get that opportunity. Right, all yours. Right. Tend to put this grease proof paper down because apparently I'll make a mess. I've also left the vacuum cleaner out because he does. So I'm going to put some down, put plenty, but a lot of people don't for some reason. It's not a small piece of meat, so it needs plenty of seasoning, alright? So I'm going to put that on now, like that, and then we're going to give it some. Please give it more than you think, all right. And obviously, this is a mixture of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. So it's not all salt, it's not all garlic powder, it's not all pepper. So you should get a decent and even covering, yeah. And then just move it around. Yeah. So you can see that that's got. A nice covering on. Which also gives a nice crust, doesn't it? And then I think Pen's cooking this to dehydrate. Yeah. Normally I would colour it, but she assume, uh, assures me that we don't need to do that. So. Because? Like you, I'm trusting her. Okay, so there you go. You can see there's plenty on here. There's barely any on the floor. So. No earache for me today. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, well. Right. There you go. All right. So plenty on. As I say, give it more than you would normally and you'll reap the benefits. Okay. There you go. Quick one. Keep cooking. Right. It's time to put our meat into the ninja. So remember both hands because I'm pulling the drawer right out and I'm going to pop the, nin the ninja, the meat, into one drawer. I have checked, I know it will fit and when I say I've checked, I tried it when it was still backpacked. So just rinse my hands off, back in. Switch it on, we want zone one. And we want dehydrate we want dehydrate and it automatically goes to it at 60 degrees for six hours now people think oh dehydrate that's going to dry the meat out because you know you use dehydrate to dry things but the things that you dehydrate are generally a lot smaller a lot slimmer i mean they're you know way for thin often this think of it as a slow cook because that's really what it is, a slow cook without any liquid. So six hours and away we go. Um, I will check it periodically. I will temperature probe it and um, you'll be back when it's cooked. Um, let me just tell you. As I just said, let me just tell you, we are having our dinner with roast potatoes and Yorkshire puddings which will be cooked in the Ninja and Ninja AF500 
Heritage UK and we're going to be having vegetables, um, I th yeah, carrots, leeks and cabbage and I'm going to do leeks and cabbage together and they're going to be cooked, oh it's not there, they're going to be cooked in my speedy so it really is a ninja cooking day. Our six hours is up and we are cooling from that. I had my foil ready to put my beef in. Also, I have got some um, brisket paper first just to stop the foil actually from contacting the beef direct. I'm going to show you what it looks like. But of course, don't forget, I'm now going, once I've taken it out instead of showing you, I'm going to be giving it a, uh, a few minutes on air fry. Right. Now then. There is our piece of meat. Now, that is cooked. How do I know it's cooked? Well, I'll get the temperature probe. I'm going to show you. So long as it's over 55 degrees, I'm going to be happy. So, into the middle of the meat goes my temperature probe. And we're reading 64, so it's me over medium. So that's fine. So, let's get our meat put back in. And we're going to max crisp it. about five or six minutes on each side and um, I've got my potatoes here that are parboiled I'm just going to ruffle them up in the colander like that then they along with some red onion wedges and some garlic whole cloves will be coated in some avocado oil from my Evo sprayer and then I will roast the potatoes. My Yorkshire pudding mix is made. My vegetables are ready to go. So, we'll, uh, I think we'll be back when it's dish up time, don't you? <coughs> Excuse me. Our 10 minutes um, max crisp is almost up. I've turned it a couple of times. And I really wish you could smell this because it truly smells fabulous in my kitchen right now. Roast beef, you cannot beat it. I'm hoping that this will smell, will smell, will taste every bit as good as it smells. Because there we are, Uncle. It, it's uh, my mouth is watering, and I'm having to keep eating the carrots that I've prepared. So. Looks like I might have to uh, prep another carrot. Does anybody else do that? Eat the veg raw before, obviously, as they're prepping and what have you. I do. I do. I eat ninety percent of raw vegetables. I don't eat raw potatoes. I can't think of anything worse. Raw parsnip, no. But other than that, raw beetroot probably. I just, I love raw vegetables and the heart of a cabbage. Oh my days, it's really strong and peppery. Steve thinks I'm crazy and not just because I eat raw vegetables. Right. Oh my gosh. Look. Oops. I will lift it back up so you can see it. looking and thinking but penny that's burnt trust me it isn't burnt that will be beautifully pink on the inside so now i am wrapping it
I will carve. Meantime, obviously, I will have prepared the rest. I think I've covered the rest of the dinner. So we'll see this when we're dished up. Right, dinner is dished up and I had a bit of a disaster. No, what happened was, well, I'll show you. My Yorkshires rose so much that they actually caught on the element, but <coughs> no matter. A little bit of burn won't kill us, will it? Well, it probably will Steve because I doubt they'll eat it. Anyway, I've got gravy here made with the meat juices and I'm going to bring you down so you can see the actual meals and then we can do the taste. I won't put a lot of gravy on Steve because he does like to do it himself, but I just think it'll look visually more appealing with the gravy on. And the same on mine. The rest will go through. So, there we go. Roast beef cooked in the Ninja AF500 UK. And I've tasted it. Oh, and look. I mean, let me just find a piece. Right, there you go. And it just, as you saw, falls apart. So, I'm going to taste this through and I'll be back. Right, I'm back. And let's have a little taste of this beef with the gravy made from the meat juices. Now you don't get any meat juices in the pan when you're cooking on dehydrate, but the resting meat juices are just amazing. So. Absolutely lovely. I'm just going to try a bit of the cabbage and leek. Oh, yes. Right, let's just show you this meat. And the important thing, when you are carving your meat, carve against the grain, because you could have the most expensive joint in the world and if you carve it the wrong way, it will be tough and chewy. Wow. That is damn delicious. So, thank you for watching this edition of In The Kitchen with Pen. I'm away to eat this and I shall see you all again very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. If you'd like to see more of what we get up to in the kitchen, click here. And if you'd like to subscribe, please click here. And obviously, don't forget to tick that ding a ling. Stand there. That ding a ling. <laughs>